Let me just give you the uh, stats because I am so sick and tired of hearing how bad this president is, how bad this president has been on COVID. Serves him right. I love that approach. Serves mm-hmm. him right. Um, let's just let's just look at the actual stats. Now, I I hate to go to that that right wing think tank called the CDC, but here are the actual stats. Uh, America sits 10th in the world for COVID-19 deaths per million. 10th? Aren't we the greatest country in the world? We we shouldn't even be 10th. Well, okay. Mm, Let me just fill you in. We're 10th because we are the most aggressive uh, COVID-19 with our assignment guidelines. We are the most strict in the world. We classify any death that has a COVID-19 as a comorbidity as a COVID-19. So you are in a car crash and let's just say you were going for a joyride and the secret service couldn't save you and the oxygen in the car wasn't being recirculated and somebody had some poisonous fart right there by the car and you breathed it in and died That would be a COVID-19 death in America. That's not the way they do it in most countries. It's certainly not the way they do it in China, Russia, Iran, Turkey. But they also don't do it in countries like Japan, which also are always being touted as, oh, look at Japan. How's Japan doing it? They're counting it differently. Now, here's my favorite stat. If you look at the U.S. totals of deaths uh, from total population and you remove New York and you say, you know what, we're kicking New York out of the United States, we would go from the 10th to the 47th, lower than any other industrialized country. Um. Hmm. Was Donald Trump in charge of New York? Oh, no, no, no. That was the one where everybody was saying, you got to go to Chinatown. You got to eat out. Don't worry about masks. Don't close anything down. So if you just remove New York, we are at number 47 from 10. The U.S. also has the uh, by far the most aggressive COVID-19 testing um, we are the, we're the most aggressive, aggressive in the world. Now, with 105 million total tests conducted, roughly 30% of the population has now had a test. That inflates the total confirmed case numbers compared to the rest of the world. America also sits right at average for case fatality rate. That's the rate which confirmed COVID-19 patients die. 4% of the treated patients die. So we, that's the worst stat we have. And we're average. Americans' infection fatality rate, total number of people infected versus total confirmed deaths, however, is 0.63%. So in other words, you can be infected and not die. We have 0.63%. That's well below the average, which the WHO estimates to be 0.94%. According to the WHO data, 38 countries have infection fatality rates higher than the U.S., including the U.K., Scotland, Spain, India, Mexico, and Belgium. 38 countries are worse than we are. The infection fatality rate in the U.S. has uh, has steadily improved as treatment therapy switched from treating COVID-19 as a lung disorder instead of treating it as a clotting and blood pressure disorder. We went from a 1.18% IFR in May to 0.63 in August. We have cut the IFR in half. When looking... At the broader total fatality rate or total uh, mortality rate, which total population versus total deaths, the U.S. is 37th on that list, below Spain, France, Brazil, the U.K., and Belgium. We are the worst, aren't we? Oh my gosh, Donald Trump is just the worst. 
Take New York out of it. Those numbers are with New York in it. Take New York out of it, and we are a dream. Lawrence Liverpool lab researchers estimated in June. Now, this I want you to hear carefully. Because I remember the cries of racism, the cries of xenophobia. Lawrence Liverpool, uh, Livermore Labs researchers estimated in June that without the travel restrictions done by T- President Trump from China and the EU, and given the early case fatality rate of those countries, if the U.S. hadn't closed travel from China and from Europe, the case fatality rate would be the same, and we would have now 720,000 dead. Travel restrictions dramatically slowed the death rate by slowing the infection rate. But that's only from one of the you know, most trusted laboratories in the world. Now, the New York Times uh, just uh, had a uh, story out. The World Health Organization said open borders would help fight the disease. Experts and a global treaty agreed, but the science and the evidence was never behind them. Now, this is a story that says from the New York Times today, when the coronavirus emerged in China in January, the World Health Organization didn't flinch in its advice. Do not restrict travel. But what is clear now? is that that policy was about politics and economics more than public health. That means when the president didn't listen to the scientists and the experts, but decided to not do it for politics and economics and be called a racist and a xenophobe and somebody who was a flat earther because he wouldn't listen to the WHO, it, is, it, it seems as though he was right. Public health records, scores of scientific studies with interviews with more than two dozen experts show the policy of unobstructed travel was never based on hard science. It's part of the religion of global health, says the New York Times. Travel and trade restrictions are bad. Um, so we have now that cute little story. I want to give you one more story uh, from the New York Times uh, on the WHO. Now, I've heard all weekend that this president gets what he deserves. That's a very comforting and very Christian-like thing. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't believe in religion unless it is Gaia. Um, he gets what he deserves because... He did nothing, okay? We just showed you that you were wrong on the don't close the borders. He closed them early. He saved about, according to experts, unless you're a flat earther, he saved about 500,000 lives from doing just that. And now you're upset because he, you know, he just thinks these masks are ridiculous. First of all, he's wearing masks. Second of all, they don't work. Okay, they don't work. They make everybody feel good. I love these people who have it just, they they don't even, they put it over their mouth, but not their nose. Have you seen that? They just wear it all the time. Just over the, do you think your nose doesn't breathe in any (laughs) virus? What, what, What do you think that is? How about if you're wearing a mask and you wear glasses, they're fogging up. Why do you think they fog up? Oh, I know. Because air is going up and down in front of your lenses. Because your face isn't sealed behind that stupid mask that your wife or your grandmother or a friend made. Now, that's just the rantings of a lunatic on the right. Unless... Unless you go to the World Health Organization and their review of numerous studies testing the efficacy of face coverings to stop the transmission of influenza. And they found, quote, no evidence that wearing a mask is effective in reducing transmission of the virus. 
The 2019 review is part of a larger study examining non-pharmaceutical public health measures for mitigating the risk and impact of e- epidemic and pandemic flus. The systematic review of the evidence on the effectiveness of non-pharmaceutical interventions, including personal protective measures, environmental measures, social distancing measures, and travel-related measures. The document reviews 10, count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 separate randomized controlled trials examining the effectiveness of face masks in stopping transmission. There was no evidence that a face mask is effective at reducing transmission of laboratory-confirmed influenza. Uh, Yet, the World Health Organization itself gives shifting advice on cloth masks. In 2019, Literature Review stated it bluntly, reusable cloth face masks are not recommended. In its guidance over the summer, however, it gave gave detailed technical standards by which individuals might make their own cloth face mask coverings. Meanwhile, the WHO states that it does not recommend the widespread of cloth face masks among the public for control of COVID-19. I don't know if you've been outside lately, but that's all I ever see are people's cloth face masks that the WHO recommended no one wear because they are ineffective for COVID-19. But it's good everybody in the press wears those cloth face masks and is upset that the president didn't wear his cloth face mask at all times. What a bunch of losers. (laughs) 